everybody and welcome back. Um, I think I've said this before and I think other people have said it. <clears throat> sometimes your pro you dictate your projects and sometimes your projects dictate what you're going to do. <clears throat> um, so, uh, I think, I, you know, I took my last video of, for the ST70 was, um, I said I took four takes and I don't remember if the very last one I did was, uh, talked about the fact that uh, my Hickok 600A died last week. Um, <clears throat> so that was a bit of a bummer because it worked the week before. <laughs> but I guess that's how things work sometimes. So um, since I didn't uh, really want to troubleshoot that one so much yet, only because I fear that whatever's wrong with it may be fatal because there are certain things that can go wrong with those that are impossible to or nearly impossible to replace um, and actually I, I suspect it's the bias pot and that's the one of the fatal uh, items but anyway so I had mentioned this uh, Jackson 658A before and I picked it up really cheap I don't know a year ago or so. Uh, so, um, I bought all the parts for it, uh, well, at least the capacitors, and, um, you know, it was working, um, but, uh, when I went to go test the Novar tubes, I had used it before and it was okay, but when I went to go test the Novar tubes, I noticed that it basically seems to like every tube I put into it. Uh, everything goes up to 130. So, be that as it may, uh, I didn't believe that was true. So here we are, and um, my particular interest in getting this done was that I did not get to test all of the Novar tubes or my compactrons beyond shorts because, like I said, everything you test comes out at 130%. So um, anyhow, I had downloaded the. Uh, instructions for how to restore and calibrate one of these things and I also uh, I had a schematic that was pretty bad um, I took the schematic out in the bottom of the of the on the bottom of the case was stapled an 11 uh, eight and a half by 14 legal sized uh, schematic uh, I went ahead and scanned that in and scrunched it down because I don't have any eight and a half, uh, eight and a half by fourteen paper and uh, um, the store only seemed to have reams and I really don't want to buy five hundred sheets. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, <clears throat> so I started going through it and uh, through the calibration and restoration and one of the items that I came across was. Uh, uh, one of the items they mentioned was R19, which is an adjustable pot. And they basically said you need to take it out to make sure it's good because it's known for going bad. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and flip this around. And uh, <clears throat> it is a little heavy. <laughs> so, R19 actually goes up here. It's in this empty spot here. Um, what they didn't tell me was that due to the fact that they use this perforated breadboard basically and they put brass rivets where they're going to do the point to point wiring. Um, so there was, a, I think there was a problem with the pot because it was kind of skipping all over the place and unfortunately <clears throat> when D tried to desolder it it did kind of destroy it a little bit. Uh, it bent it up, and, and now it it does work. But if you, with the slightest touch uh, on the element, let's just see what one of these looks like on the inside. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a it's a wire wound uh, uh, trimmer. Um, what I don't think that they were told me was that it was going to be destroyed. <laughs> pretty much taking it out. Uh, so I looked online a bit uh, for a couple of days and 
You know, it's hard to find uh, anything like this. I I'm pretty sure they exist. The guy who did this, it shows he has a new one in here. But um, another thing that they mention in uh, the uh, calibration and restoration, I don't know if you can see that picture, is that um, to be very mindful that components may not be where they say they would be and uh, they may not be the same values, etc, etc. So sure enough, I have the right out of the bottom of the box and I came across um, <clears throat> an electrolytic capacitor that's not listed on the schematic and it is not listed uh, in the parts list either. Um, so uh, I went ahead and replaced that already. It was an 8 microfarad. Um, so uh, I bought some of these pots. I ended up with these uh, uh, linear pots here. Uh, this one's wire wound. Uh, this is it's a 5K, and I ended up with these two and a half Ks in case I need them. But what I also discovered is if I shine a flashlight through the perforations and peek under the bottom, I can actually see the. The wire elements and uh, the rest of them all tested pretty stable. Um, so uh, it's weird. Weird. I would think that the wire wound would go bad. Uh, they either break or they don't. But I guess the it can come. Uh, the wiper can get a little loose or dirty or something. Anyhow, so I came up with this, and uh, this should hopefully work. I'll find out. Um, I've already cleaned the switches up a bit. They were kind of corroded. Uh, they had that, um, uh, I don't know if I got all of it off, but they had that stuff that looks kind of like snow. That corrosion that's, uh, well, aluminum corrosion, I guess it's a, a, a porcelain or ceramic or whatever. So, uh, I, uh, did clean that up with some CRC and I, I followed that uh, up with a chaser of deoxit. I clean the switches. I haven't uh, sprayed these with the oxit yet. Clean the switch underneath here for the line control. Or is that the line control? The line controls on this side. Cleaned up the short switch. Um, did find a bulging resistor up here. This is a R19. Somewhere. Well, I think I'd be able to find it with the value at least. There it is. Oh, R9 and R10. Um, and they're on either side of the, of, uh, of uh, R12 here, which is a, a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, this is bulging, but uh, it, it does actually ohm out at uh, 356. Um, they made me want to pay, pay special attention to R12, but it didn't look like R12 burned up, at least from when I looked at it. <clears throat> Since this is connected up to the diodes, um, that's one of the main things that they caution you, make sure you replace these diodes because they go bad. Um, so I do have a bunch of those. Um, uh, uh, 4007's might work. No, they don't because they only go to 700. <clears throat> so, um, I got some big old suckers. So, I got uh, some 5408. <laughs> so, uh, these should definitely make sure that uh, I guess I don't need to stay that. So, these should definitely make sure that uh, it doesn't blow up. I just have to make sure I get the orientation correct. <laughs> um, so, uh, so there's that. So replacing those uh, resistors, put that pot in, and then uh, I've got a couple more caps to do. Um, this tube tested good before, but now I can't test the tubes anyway. All I have is my I-177B, and that won't... Well, I guess it will do 7-pin tubes, but... Um, I don't know if it'll do a, a 6AV6 or not. I didn't even look. Uh, this only uses a 6AV6 to check 
the grid leakage, so otherwise it's pretty much a solid state tester. Um, so another thing you got to be careful of these is uh, I guess the, the meters are not all that great on them usually, but this meter does work, so um, well, it goes up to 130. I, I'm assuming that the meter is okay. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that, and um, I'll come back when I get some more progress done. Welcome back. I'm uh, moving right along. I've uh, replaced the. Uh, oops. <laughs> Got my oh so sophisticated holders there. Um, so I checked all of the uh, resistors here. Um, I had. Uh, let's see. Oops. So uh, uh, this one was out of tolerance. And um, these two are on the border, but I don't have any. These are both 2 watt 68 ohms. Uh, they're at, we're both running at 74. It's right on the 10% cusp, I guess. Um, but I don't have any, and uh, I don't want to drive all the way across town to spend um, 38 cents. <laughs> Uh, one uh, interesting thing is uh, there's um, uh, there's a filter here and a filter here, and I've never actually seen these before, but you know I don't have that much experience. But um, these are actually resistors. Um, let's see, I'll focus in on. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There it is. Uh, okay. Um, so this is uh, looks like Litz wire, uh, cloth coated, and it's uh, wrapped around. Um, it's not glued together or anything. Uh, these resistors. I think one of these is a 49 ohm, but it's also soldered to the end. So um, I maybe that's a, a, a poor man's coil. <laughs> um, anyway, so. Uh, I'm not going to detach the wiring to, to test the, those, so hopefully I won't run into any problems when I go to calibrate it. Um, so one other resistor, where is it? I did this last night, and so uh, maybe it was underneath. No. Well, I found one that was open, and I don't know where it is, or maybe I dreamed about it. Um, so uh, one of the things I did was uh, I replaced the uh, the eh, all right. I replaced the 360 ohms. Both of them were actually bulging, and uh, I replaced it actually with five watt ones because um, uh, because they're half a percent actually. Um, interestingly, and I don't know if it's just the brand that they use, but one of the reasons I bought two watts, two, whoop, you can't see that. <laughs> I bought some two watt ones here, um, but uh, several of the two watts I bought from my local electronics place have been just all over the place in value, and I, I know that it's okay, but <laughs> anyway, so I ended up using the five watt half a percent. Um, military spec ones um, they weren't that expensive they were 39 cents each um, and coincidentally good thing I followed uh, the instructions where it said to uh, be sure when you're replacing components to make sure that the buttons still operate because this one was too close and I was unable to press one of the buttons up front it was running into it so I had to move it um, so I've been kind of procrastinating this because it's going to be a big pain, but it's really time to tackle these diodes, and I just don't want to do it. <laughs> so um, they're just so packed in there. But I, I guess once it's done, it's done. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this electrolytic, and uh, then I guess I'll, I have to flip this over. Uh, one of the things is uh, I'm going to do, there's uh, another electrolytic down here and that will take care of all of those. Um, you know, I cannot for the life of me, there's a, 
ceramic one supposedly in here somewhere, and I cannot find it, and it's sort of a alarming. Um, chances are it's okay anyway, but again, like I said, I can't find it. <laughs> it's on the schematic. Unless they left it off, I, I guess I'll have to trace the wiring down, but the wiring in here is so compact and so much of it. Um, fortunately, it's all color-coded, but uh, uh, where that thing is buried is beyond me. And I'm just looking real quick because it, it, I'm sure you've seen in my videos before where I say I can't find something and boom, right there, it's right in front of me when I'm doing the video. Anyhow, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get to that, and I guess I should probably take this tube out because uh, otherwise I'm going to break it, and I don't have a way yet of testing tubes. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get to that. All the values, like I said, are, are, are well within tolerance, and uh, except for these are on the, the border. Um, oh, it was this one here that was open. There it is. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, upload... I guess this video just so I have something up there for you all to watch and I will be back when I'm done with the um, uh, 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 diodes so thanks for watching and I'll see you soon